Hi, this is James, and I'm here with the Oracle Outlook for the week starting August the 20th, 2018. This week, I was prompted and guided to work with a particular deck, and the deck has already shown up twice in a short amount of time in this space. And the deck is the Vintage Gypsy Witch Fortune Telling Oracle Cards. That is quite the mouthful. <laughs> by Lynn Boyle, and I will be leaving a link to Lynn's Etsy shop in the description box below in case you're feeling inclined to either A, learn more about the deck, or B, if you're wanting to add it to your collection, you will find all the purchasing details in her shop. So I talked about this idea about being prompted and got it to work with this deck. So not only was I encouraged to do this week's reading with it, but I was also given specific details on what I'm supposed to do with this reading. So I will be talking more about that as the reading progresses. But for now, the deck is on the table. I'm going to take it in hand. I'm going to shuffle the cards. And as I shuffle the cards, I'm going to be focusing on my usual intention and question for these weekly general readings. And that is, what do we need to know for the week ahead? Now I'm going to shuffle the cards my other way just for a bit. All right, and I'm feeling that will do. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the deck. And fan the cards out. And at this point, I'm going to be looking for five cards in the fan that are getting my attention. That is one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so I have the five cards selected. I'm putting the remainder of the deck to one side. And now I have the five cards face down. And so more often than not, when I'm doing a line of five reading, I like to start with the middle card. For me, the middle card always represents the central issue, something we're being asked to focus on for the week going forward. Or if a particular story or stories unfolds in the cards, this would be the heart of the story. I have recently added this description about the center card to my list, and this is known as the hinge card. And so if we're talking about a specific situation or situations, the middle card says that everything hinges on whatever the information is around this card. So now that I've given it quite the buildup, let's take a look at the card. So here we have, okay, so here we have the Jack of Clubs and Order. So when I'm working with the Gypsy Witch style cards, I tend to like to work with both the playing card aspect of the card and the symbol on the card. So going with the Jack of Clubs, Jacks for me in playing card cardomancy represent news or messengers, messengers, I should say, or messages, right? So there may be some focus or concentration on communication. And as I'm thinking about that, I am not entirely sure, because I'm not an astrologer, but I'm not entirely sure if at this point in time, Mercury has gone direct, right? So if it hasn't, we're still being given a heads up about the way we communicate with others this week. And the reason why I'm harping on that aspect of it it's because clubs can represent work and business, but also this idea about social, being social and social activity. So it could just be, you know, information or news or messages being shared within our social circles this week. So if that's the case, then you're being asked to really pay attention to the methods and the means and the modes of communications that we're using this week, or if we're having face-to-face, -face, please remember to make sure that your words are clear, and easily understood you know and even if you have to ask like you know reflectively you know uh, if what you have said has been understood and allow the other person to kind of repeat back to you what you've said then exercise that option you know just so you can be sure you know um, and also too even when mercury goes direct i do know this that there is a little bit of what we call a shadow phase which usually lasts about a week to a week and a half so doesn't mean that we're totally 100 percent in the clear when it comes to communication so again, Jack of Clubs could represent news or messages. It could be news or messages about work or business. 
And that could be in the literal sense, but that could also be in the metaphorical business of life sense. You know, what do we need to work on? What business at hand do we need to attend to? Those kinds of things. And what are we communicating about those kinds of things, whether it's in the literal or the metaphorical, right? So there is that. This card could also suggest that there may be news or messages that goes public. You know, again, with this idea about, you know, clubs representing social, I tend to look at this particular card about public news. So there may be some sort of news or message that goes public. You know, so it makes me feel like in the sense of like the internet being what it is these days about everything going viral. So there may be something that goes viral this week in terms of, a, of news or a particular message, right? So there is that. The last thing that I want to say about the Jack of Clubs is that the Jack of Clubs can represent um, this concept of being known as the Herald of the Night. And if that's the case, then... This card could just be about gaining news or messages that helps move either yourself or people through a difficult time because I'm seeing a different image in my head to get me to say that. So again, this could be about the Herald of the Night and that would be news or messages meant to enlighten us and help us move through a difficult or challenging period of time, right? Now, moving to the symbol, order is shown as a metal. So this could be, you know, news or messages that have to do with some sort of honor being bestowed to someone, some sort of recognition. And if that's the case, it could be recognition for work or business. Again, that could be very literal, like somebody actually gets a work-related award or a business kind of award or some sort of commendation, that kind of thing. When I worked out in the corporate world, we had what we call service awards, like you put in a certain amount of time on the job and then as a result of that, you've got some sort of award for acknowledgement of the amount of time you've put in in terms of service on the job. So it could even be something like that for some people, like some people are being acknowledged or recognized for their service. Now I sometimes think about this in terms of like military service, political service, that kind of thing as well. So if it's not work in the corporate sense or out in the working world kind of sense, and it could just be a matter of a service kind of award. You put in some kind of service or you've done something and you're receiving some kind of award or acknowledgement for that. Now, if it's not that in, in the literal sense, then clubs is the suit of progress. So this could just be the card's way of acknowledging you know, progress that you've made in terms of handling some kind of business in your life or you're being acknowledged for the progress you've made through a situation and the work and the effort that you have put into it to get you from where you were to where you are now. So if that's the case, whether somebody's actually giving you praise or giving you a commendation or something in the literal sense, that's great. We need to applaud that. But how can you honor your own progress? How can you celebrate your own progress? That kind of thing. I'm seeing that. I know this because I'm, I'm seeing this in my mind. Some people, when they make the switch from Lenormand to this particular system, there's one card that didn't make the cut from one system to the other, and that's the cross. And so sometimes people look at this card as the cross. So I'm seeing that. With that, it could just be about making on some progress through a burden or difficulty because I'm seeing the cross and that reminds me last week's reading we talked about cross because cross was the focus card then right so if you resonated with the burden and the difficulty the, uh, that we talked about last week if that resonated with you then the flip side of this it could be suggesting you've come on the other side of that and you need to celebrate the progress that you've made and you may have put a lot of work and effort into getting through that so this card is saying, hooray, yay for you, good work, right? Now going with that, it could just be a matter of somebody also thinking about now's the time for you to embark on the next leg or stage of your spiritual journey. We've talked about that. That's been a recurring theme these last few weeks in these readings, right? So here we have it again, possibly. And with that, somebody's being applauded for doing the work in terms of maybe wrapping things up or moving through an experience, getting to the other side of that. And you see the spiritual implications of that. You see the spiritual lessons in that. And that sets the stage for you to move on to the next stage 
or the next phase or the next chapter. Remember, with the idea that the Jack of Clubs is known as the Herald of the Night. And so you have moved through maybe perhaps even your Dark Night of the Soul. Because I'm seeing that in my head, that, that phrase, that expression about a Dark Night of the Soul. You've moved through that. And so now you're being applauded. You're being uh, commended for that effort, um, that work. Um, that you put into that uh, experience, right? So, again, this is all, the focus card here is all about honor and recognition in whatever ways that's going to show up for each of us this week, whether it comes from an external source, meaning that other people give it to us, or that we give it to another person, or that we take the time and energy to give it to ourselves, right? And I would say that too, especially if you may have become accustomed to the idea that you have a need to be recognized from the external world for some reason. How can you honor and recognize yourself so that doesn't become a thing where you're always seeking external validation, right? And as I'm saying that, the flip side to that is if you're embarking on a new stage or phase in your maybe spiritual life, in your spiritual direction, on your spiritual path, then this card is about paying attention to the signs. I just got in my head this imagery about noticing the signs. So I'm a big believer that life is always speaking to us. It's a matter of whether or not we are taking the time to pay attention. So this could be the week where you get a sign and you're being asked to maybe not overlook the signs when they show up to kind of validate or confirm the path that you're on or the path that you are contemplating embarking on. Right? So I'm seeing all of that with the Jack of Clubs and the Order card. So now let's take a look to see what unfolds or what the outer circumstances or conditions are with the surrounding cards, starting with the card on the far left. And here we have, <laughs> okay, so here we have the Ten of Clubs and the Tower. So the first thing that I want to offer for those of you who may have resonated with this idea about work or business this would fit with both the Ten of Clubs and the Tower. The Ten of Clubs is a small business card. So for some people, this could be about maybe gaining some kind of honor and recognition in your small business. Or that you have contemplated the idea of either starting a business or going into business. This card would be validating that. And also too, while well, I talked about paying attention to the signs, you may get external validation that you're supposed to be moving into your own thing. Kind of just like what we talked about with the cards last week, although we had talked about the decline of business, I'm seeing this differently this week. So somebody may feel the unction, the urging, the prompting, the leading to go into business for themselves. And if so, how can you get that ball started, right? So there is that. Somebody could also be making the transition from being an employee, being paid on the job for the man, to doing your own thing. Um, because I'm hearing, I'm hearing in my head <laughs> the song, Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves. So somebody may be thinking about doing it for themselves. <laughs> so that is the Ten of Clubs. But if it's not the work or business, this card again is reinforcing what I just talked about with the order card about honor and recognition. Because this card would represent having a lot of work to do or that we put a lot of work and effort into making some kind of progress. And that needs to be celebrated, whether it's a party of one <laughs> or, you know, other people stand up and take notice of that progress being made. So that's a 10 of clubs. It could also be for some people, interestingly enough, my personal slant on the 10 of clubs is that sometimes it shows up where no mistake, I'm filming a video. This card usually is my video card and either, either on the days where I'm shooting the video, this card would show up for me personally or... I need to do the post-production work and get it done, and I need to complete the video. So if it's not about a video in particular, this card for some people could just be a matter of either putting some energy, some effort into getting something done and completed, right? So I'm seeing that because it has personal reference to me, so I'm seeing that. So we'll see how quickly I can get this video done in terms of post-production, <laughs> right? So then the tower, okay, so now the tower could represent something becoming official, so if we have this idea about being celebrated, being honored, being recognized by external sources, right, then this card here would say a couple of things. Either it's going to come through some sort of institution, a company, corporation, a firm, or it's going to be 
something that becomes official. This is my official card, things becoming official. So it could just be that. So again, one or two ways, either, you know, it's the metaphorical sense where I've already talked about we put work and energy and effort into a situation, we've made progress, and that's being celebrated. Or that somebody is literally receiving some kind of honor and recognition of an official capacity, either for work, business, or some kind of service. So that is the Ten of Clubs and Tower. So now let's take a look at the card in between. And here we have, okay, so here we have the three of clubs and the tree. So the first thing that jumps out at me in the moment is that we have three cards from the suit of clubs. It's the ruling majority right now. So clubs, again, represents work, business, whether it's a literal, metaphorical. It also represents progress being made. It represents social, social activity. But it also can represent this idea about teaching and learning. So if we go with the idea in the spiritual context, I'm always harping on this, so it sounds, I may, it sounds like I might be a broken record, but it always is worth repeating that everything that happens in life has a lesson that is contained within it. So you're being asked, if you go with the idea that life is speaking to you like I talked about earlier, what is it showing you? What is it revealing to you? What have your life experiences taught you? What have you learned from them? That's all... Um, be, uh, we're being asked to take into consideration, if I can get the words out, this week. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the Three of Clubs is a card that can represent growth and development. And it represents having a practical understanding of what goes on in your life and in your world. Right? So there is that. So, at some level, this is just acknowledging your own growth and development. And with that, I will quickly add Tree as a symbol to that, because Tree is also a symbol that represents growth and development. And so this could represent life, but it could also represent one's spiritual growth and development. So again, we're getting a, a repetitive message here about paying attention to our own personal growth and development, our own spiritual growth and development this week, right? So with that, um, the three of clubs is in a business sense. This is known as the on-the-job training card. <laughs> so it could literally mean like if someone is maybe getting work through a company corporation firm going with tower and that fits for you then the next card here the three of clubs is talking about getting on the job training for whatever that job is or that position is right it could be a matter of somebody's moving up because tower can represent elevation and that would represent a promotion and with that there may be some on the job training about your change in status that you're going to um need to kind of employ or to take up, because I'm seeing that as well. Or that somebody's actually thinking about, you know, this idea about maybe moving up the ladder. And if so, do you need to have some kind of training that would uh, better able that promotion to happen for you, right? Is there something you need to do? Because clubs also represent action. So if you're thinking about moving up, if you're thinking about, you know, a change in status, position on the job or in the company, you know, then what actions are you willing to take that would allow that to happen? The other thing here with the three of clubs is car can sometimes show up, and this could be either in the working business sense or in the business of life sense, where we're at a stage where we may be exploring options and broadening our horizons. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So that is how I would look at the three of clubs. So again, generally speaking, this card could represent growth and development, and that could be in any and all forms, right? So I already talked about tree also being about growth and development, but tree is also about healing. So that progress that I talked about earlier, right? For some people, it may be about like you worked on healing, and that could be either emotional healing, psychological healing, spiritual healing, but you worked on healing a situation for yourself. And you're being, you're being um, encouraged to acknowledge how far you've come in that regard. In terms of your spiritual growth and development, I'm seeing this in particular, the tree can represent roots or foundation. So you may have... Um, you know, set this, uh, uh, set the stage, planted the seeds, and to move into a new direction. 
the roots are starting to take hold and now you're seeing some growth and development. But also know this too, that one of the lessons that goes with the tree is about learning the, the fine art of patience, right? Because trees take time to grow and develop. So if you're going through an experience of where you're feeling frustrated or in, impatient to some degree with something that's taking place, the tree is asking you to be patient. How can you be patient with the process, right? So there is that. Another thing that could happen is that for some people in particular, because I talked about the social aspect of clubs, that there may be a situation that has to deal with um, extended family or one's family history, because this could be one's family tree. I tend to look at this as lineage, heritage, ancestry, that kind of thing. So there may be something having to have been learned or healed that may be of an ancestral nature, you know, and so, we, you know, in order to heal the experience, we had to go back to the roots of it, where it, it originated, where it was first developed, that kind of thing. It's making me feel like somebody went back to the root or the root cause of something in order to heal the experience, right? So there is that to also consider. Um, so I'm seeing that with the three of clubs and tree. The only other thing I was going to say, because I paused for a moment there, um, that if we pair, tower and tree, we have a health institution. So there may be something having to do with actual physical healing. And somebody could be in, a, in something like a, a hospital or some sort of healing center. Or I'm just seeing as soon as I said the words healing center, that somebody is thinking about starting a business that may be of a healing center and doing spiritual healing work in it, right? And so it could just be a matter of that becoming official to some degree. Um, but it could also be too, like there may be some growth and development within an institution and it may involve things like um, policies, procedures, rules, regulations, those kinds of things, right? So I'm seeing that. But it could also be too, like somebody is working on themselves and one way they're doing it from a spiritual healing standpoint is that there may be meditating because the, the tower for me is a card that can represent isolation. So there's a period of separation or isolation, um, but it's designed so we can kind of elevate our consciousness. So I'm seeing that idea. So maybe something that would be helpful in terms of healing would be um, meditation, right? Gaining a different, uh, different perspective or a new level of awareness about a situation. So there's that, you know, so that new level of awareness leads to healing, some kind of healing. So there's that. All right, so now let's take a look and see what's on the other side of the order card, starting with the card closest to it. Wow, here we have another one. So here we have the seven of clubs and lilies. So again, we have another clubs card. So again, this is a week about taking action, whether it's some sort of internal action you know, where we take the step of going within, that's an action going within, or we do something where we take external action on something. But the seven of clubs is a card that can represent small difficulties. So I'm saying that to say this, it reminds me of going back to what I said about cross and this idea about difficulties and burdens and things of that nature. Here we have maybe a de-escalation of whatever that, um, burden that difficulty was last week, it could be becoming smaller or more more minute in detail because this card, the seven of clubs, is all about small difficulties. And with that, having what it takes to overcome them. So again, it's making me feel like I may have said this with the cards last week in terms of mice. I, I remember mice was the first card and we talked about the little things like a little petty annoyances, irritations, nuisances, things of that nature. This card is making me feel like don't sweat the small stuff. If you've just went through a huge thing and you've seen huge progress, don't derail your progress by sweating the small stuff, by getting yourself riled up about the small stuff, right? Because the seven is a number of spirituality, so there's that emphasis again, but it's also about self-awareness. If you don't consider yourself to be a spiritual person, then the self-awareness aspect is more of a personal growth and development or a psychological growth and development kind of slant. You know, but either way, it's this card is saying, don't, don't get sidetracked, don't get derailed by the small stuff, right? 
another possibility here with this card is that the seven of cups can represent a time where we talked about work or business where this is the time to kind of roll up our sleeves and start putting in some work and effort because this represents hard work so again it could just be a matter of again your hard work and your effort being acknowledged or that if you're moving into something new like starting your own business this may be the week where we put in sweat equity and we roll up our sleeves and we get get it done the other thing about that is that this is enough a time to also put our nose to the grindstone. It's kind of the same thing, but it's either hard work or effort or putting our nose to the grindstone. Either way, it implies work or effort being put into a situation, right? And with that, the seven is all about improvement. So it's making me feel like this could be about self-improvement, going with the idea that the majority of the cards seem to be talking about personal growth and development this week. So it could just be a matter of, you know, improving a situation, but it would be your own self-improvement right kind of thing and seeing the rewards or the effort with that and that's a nice segue to get into lilies because lilies is a card for me that can represent uh, maturity this is about wisdom gained through experience this card for me represents wisdom maturity experience so it could just be a matter of whatever it is that you are facing this week always i always bring it back to this but always stop and consider what is this particular experience teaching me that i wouldn't learn any other way than this particular experience, this particular lens, getting it this particular way, right? Because if it's showing up in your life, remember now the slant of all these clubs is also about teaching and learning. So we're being given a heads up to really pay attention to what it is that we experience because there's always a lesson contained in it. If we are willing to be open to the possibility of that lesson being revealed to us. And sometimes it comes in hindsight being 2020. Sometimes you have to get through it like maybe those difficulties and burdens we talked about last week, you have to get through it first, and then you get to see what the lesson was on the other side of it. And if that's the case, maybe this is the time to put some energy and effort into kind of discovering what that lesson was. Right, so there's that. But again, Lilies is all about wisdom, maturity, experience. It could also be dealing with the past, because I tend to look at this as old things, right? And it could also be this idea about memory, because I tend to look at... You know, we use lilies as a way to kind of um, memorialize those have, that have come before us, you know, or, you know, those who have left us, left this world kind of thing. We kind of memorialize things with lilies. So this could just be a matter of either a memorial um, or that we are needing to kind of maybe uh, take another look at some kind of memory. This may be like strolling down memory lane and getting an assessment or a reassessment of a past experience, you know, that kind of thing. Also, too, with lilies, lilies is about coming into a state of tranquility, harmony, and peace. So, what would you be willing to do in terms of putting effort or work into your life so you could have more peace? And would you be willing to do that? That is the Seven of Clubs and lilies. Now, as I said that, I'm also feeling that for some people, on either in the literal sense, this could be a time where we are honoring and recognizing those who have passed on going with the idea of order and lilies so with that it could be like somebody who has actually maybe served in an uh, official capacity and i'm talking about um maybe branches of government or military you know and being honored that regard somebody who's kind of put in service in some kind of institution it could also be like somebody who's retiring Lilies is a card of retirement, so somebody who's being honored as they retire. So those are the two more mundane 3D physical experiences I'm talking about. Another spiritual experience is that somebody may be really working with their ancestors. The tree, remember I talked about ancestors, lineage, heritage, things of that nature. You know, and there may be some way that somebody is going to honor those that they have that they work with or those who have come before them in terms of either honoring wisdom and guidance that they have received like this idea like you know um benefiting from the experience of other people the people who have come before us you know and we benefit from learning about their trials their tribulations we gain the wisdom of their experience kind of thing or that the person is in spirit those ancestors are in spirit and we are honoring their wisdom that they are giving to us in that regard 
And then, now the last card is, okay. So we have a change here in suits. <laughs> so here we have the seven of spades and clouds. Okay, so two challenging cards to show up at the end. So the seven of spades for me can represent a, a delay, a setback, something becoming stagnant, you know, a problem because spades represent problems, challenges, difficulties, so forth and so on. And then the seven is a number of spirituality, right? But it's also a number about improvement. So it could just be a matter of, you know, we may find ourselves working our way into a problem if we go with the order of the cards. Seven of clubs is about um, work and business, but when a spade comes after a club, it represents working our way into a problem. So I talked about this earlier because this is coming to me in the moment. So I talked about with the seven of clubs, this idea about, um, I mean, so, uh, jack of clubs, excuse me. I talked about this idea about news and messages, right? With the seven of clubs, what I didn't acknowledge was that this card can also represent arguments, right? So it could just be a matter of, and remember, I talked about this idea about being clear with our words, clear in our communication, and maybe doing some reflective kind of um, uh, communicating with the other person, making sure that uh, what your points um, have been easily and clearly understood and have them kind of communicate or reflect back to you what it is you said so you can understand whether they understood <laughs> what was said. So, But this card can come up on the scene to, to kind of give us a heads up about potential arguments. And if that's the case, like an argument, that may lead to some kind of setback that might lead to some kind of delay kind of thing. So there's just, we're just, and then with that, we may have to put some work and energy into trying to improve that situation. And then sometimes with the seven of spades, if that's the case, there may be some difficulty with improving it. You could improve it, but with the club coming before it, it may take some work and effort, which means that it might not be all that easy. And that may be where the hard work comes in with this and putting your nose to the grindstone, right? It could just be a matter of, I'm doing so because I need to work on either improving a difficulty, improving a problem, that kind of thing. So that is one way of looking at the seven of spades. So now we talk about clouds. Clouds represents confusion, uncertainty, doubt, right? So it could just be a matter of this idea about maybe um, connecting with ancestors. I'm going with the spiritual first. Connecting with the ancestors could be like whatever the guidance is, whatever the wisdom is that we receive. It may not be clear in the moment. And it could just be a matter of you sitting with that and allowing that to become clear. So I just know just from my own um, personal experience that when we're dealing with things of a spiritual nature, sometimes we get messages, we receive messages, and they don't make sense in the moment, right? And with that, we can either do one or two things. We can either go back in and ask for clarity, meaning like we ask spirit and say, okay, I received that piece of guidance. However, I need more clarity around it because I don't understand it, right? So we can do that. Um, or we can just allow it to kind of just sit with it, hold space for it, and just allow ourselves to keep an open mind and that when we're really ready to understand what that message was, we'll get the insight or the guidance. So there's two ways to look at that, but it makes me feel like there may be some wisdom that we get or an experience that we have and in the moment we don't understand it or it's confusing or, it's, you know, or there's some sort of uncertainty about that. It could also be too, like if we're having a communication issue with somebody and it creates a setback, there may be a, a, an opportunity to clear the air because this might be an air of confusion, an air of uncertainty kind of thing. And so we may need to take some, some effort into clearing the air, right, kind of thing. So I'm seeing that as a couple of possibilities with clouds at the end. Um, I'm just taking a step and seeing what else do I need to say about that. That's what I'm feeling. I'm really feeling like it's just really about uh, something may take place as the week progresses that we are uncertain about, that we are having some confusion about. And with that, it could either A, we need to, like let's say this argument scenario, we need to go to the other person and going, I'm not entirely clear on what's going on. I'm not really entirely sure or I understand what's going on. Would you be willing to have a conversation with me about that? You know, or what can we do to kind of improve the situation? you know, together kind of thing. It's making me feel like that is the case. Um, 
It could also be too, like again, if you're not clear, you have an experience and you're not sure about why that is happening, it's just a need for clarity. Whenever the clouds comes up for me, um, it's about, yes, the confusion and the uncertainty of it, but it's also coming on because it's saying we need clarity. So what would you be willing to do that would allow you to gain clarity, right? To, uh, that would allow the clouds to part. And would you be willing to take that step? That is how I would look at the seven of spades and clouds. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up this part of this week's Oracle Outlook. And did you notice I said this part? And so now we're going to move into what I was prompted to do specifically in terms of working with the cards this week. So I'm going to be doing in our next segment what's called the Hidden Dynamics. I learned this technique from Kathleen Matthews in her book, The Complete Lenormand Oracle Handbook, my favorite book on Lenormand. And Kathleen uses the playing cards, the playing card inserts in Lenormand for that. And so I was prompted to start doing that with the Gypsy Witch cards this week. So I've been doing that in my own personal daily draws, and I, but I was specifically asked to do that in this week's Oracle Outlook. So if you're feeling complete at this point and you feel like you're ready to move on, I want to thank you for tuning in and joining me for this week's reading. And I look forward to seeing you right back here in our next video reading together. So until then, I'm hoping that you have a wonderful day and I'm hoping that you have a wonderful week where you honor yourself for the progress that you have made up to this point in time. So if you're leaving at this point, take care, be blessed, and if you're sticking around, I look forward to seeing you in the next segment where we take a deeper dive into the cards this week, looking at the playing card inserts to see what they have to offer in terms of the hidden dynamics and the essence card. you decided to stick with me, I first want to thank you for wanting to be with me and join me for taking a deeper dive or taking another look at the cards in a different way and exploring what's known as the hidden dynamics and then taking a look to see what the essence card for this week's reading and that would be like if the universe was to drop down one card and say this is what the entire reading is in a nutshell, that would be the card. So again, thank you for hanging out and um, sticking with me as we explore this and for also allowing me to follow up on the guidance that I was given in terms of how to conduct this week's reading. Okay, so now enough of that. Let's get right into the cards. So the way that the Hidden Dynamics works is that we single out or continue our focus with the center card. So the again, our center card is the Jack of Clubs, but more importantly, the order aspect of the card. We go with more with the symbol. So again, the order is all about honor and recognition. And so that could be honor that is coming to us from an external source, honor and recognition that we are bestowing upon someone outside of ourselves, or the honor and the recognition that we are allowing to give to ourselves in terms of any work, any effort, any progress that we've made over the course of the past week or, you know, regarding our growth and development, you know, as we embark on maybe a next stage or chapter in our lives, that kind of thing. But going with the idea that the center card was talking about, you know, making progress through any kind of difficulties, burdens, challenges, and getting to the other side of that and honoring and recognition for that work that effort, that progress. So that's the focus, right? So the way that the hidden dynamics works around that is that we first want to take a look at the playing card inserts on the outer card. So if you remember, we had the Ten of Clubs on the tower and the Seven of Spades on clouds. So what we do is we add the Ten and the Seven and we get 17. So that is the total. And then what we do is we look through the deck for the 17th card in the deck. So now going through the cards. And this is always fun because you never know where the card is going to be in the deck, right? Okay. 
Okay, and here we have card 17. And so the 17th card is the Four of Hearts and Fish. So again, because I read the playing card first, the Four of Hearts is a card that can talk about emotions, feelings, and relationships because it comes from the suit of hearts. This one in particular is known as the marriage bed card. So the way that I talk about this is that there may be some work, effort, or energy being put into a particular relationship and with one that is designed that we are trying to lay a foundation so that we can create a greater sense of intimacy or connection within that relationship. So that is one relationship in particular, right? And so with the order card, it's saying we're, we're wanting to acknowledge the work and the effort that's been put into laying the foundation for that particular relationship. So if that resonates with you, you're being applauded for your efforts in that regard. If it's not about a particular relationship in which we're trying to foster a greater sense of intimacy or trying to create a, a deeper connection, then from a general standpoint, you're being acknowledged, going back to the order card as the focus, you're being acknowledged or you're being honored and your efforts are being recognized for allowing yourself to become more comfortable in the context of relationships, right? Because the four of hearts for me is about this idea about emotional comfort and emotional safety. So you have done some major work in getting to a place in which you feel comfortable. And I would say being comfortable with who you are in relationships. And as you become comfortable with who you are, that allows a greater sense of intimacy to be formed in your relationships, no matter what the context is, right? So I think for some people, it is talking about a particular relationship and honoring that, but also about you becoming more comfortable with who you are, the skin that you're in, and how you generally move through and experience relationships, generally speaking, there's some shift that has happened and you're being acknowledged for your efforts on that part, right? I also think too, going back to the order card in terms of honor and recognition, I think when we take the time to honor ourselves and we honor who we are and what we need and what we value in relationships, that makes it easier for us to show up in relationships, right? And just as we allow ourselves to do that, we also set the stage for other people to show up in a similar way. Right? When we take the time to honor who we are and accept who we are as individuals, we allow other people the same thing. We allow other people to show up as who they are. Right? And now remember, we had talked about in the possibility here about, you know, towards, towards the end of the line, we had looked at this idea about communication issues and working on improving something. And it could be a matter of the communication could revolve around this idea about I'm showing up one way and it's not being honored and recognized. Or another person is showing up as who they are and I'm not taking the time to honor and recognize that. Well, how can intimacy be developed if that's the case? Right? So I'm seeing that with the four parts. I think for some people, again, I'm going to repeat this, it's acknowledging the work and effort you have put into fostering a greater sense of intimacy or connection in a particular relationship or that you are being acknowledged for the work and effort that you are putting into and becoming more comfortable with who you are as a person in the context of your relationships, right? With that fish as a symbol, going with the, what I just talked about in terms of emotions, feelings, and relationships, this card would, or symbol I should say, on the card, would allow a deepening of something. For me, fish represents depth, going deeper, right? So it's very interesting that we're doing what we call the Hidden Dynamics, which is a deeper look going beyond the surface of the cards, right? So here we are, we're going deeper with that. So, But in this context, it represents a depth in relationships, emotional depth, that kind of thing, right? It could also be too, you know, fish is a symbol that represents abundance. So it could just be a matter of, you know, looking at in terms of maybe what you want to offer or what you have to bring to a relationship. You may be looking at, I have so much to give. I have so much to offer somebody. That is wealth. That is abundance rather than looking at it things from a place of lack, right, kind of thing. So for me, this card is suggesting in terms of honor and recognition, this is about relationships and our feelings and emotions, 
about deepening a greater sense of intimacy, becoming more comfortable, feeling safe, being who we are in relationships, right? Now, fish is also very mundane. So I will say on a very practical level, fish is also about money. So this is about cash flow, about um, revenue, um, income streams. And that would go back to what we talked about with this idea about people who may be moving into business, you know, wanting to start a business, that kind of thing. So it could just be a matter of you needing to do some work around cash flow, generating income, that kind of thing, um, because that's going to be an important part. Now, if you're creating maybe a spiritually minded business or a spiritually based business, Fish is asking you to go in with a, a prosperity consciousness and an abundance mindset. So how can you maybe do a reframe around your thinking if it's wrapped up in poverty consciousness or lack of consciousness. So that's another way of looking at the fish symbol. But that is the 17th card, four of hearts and fish. That is one dynamic to consider. You know, and so now taking a look at the inner cards that we have the three of clubs and the seven of clubs. So we have three and seven, that's 10. And I already know what this card is. Number 10 in the deck is pig which shows up quite often when I work with this deck in this space, right? So, oh, and look, lo and behold, we have it right here on the top. I didn't have to go too far down. Okay, so the one thing that Pig shares with Fish is this. This is also a card that represents abundance. So we have abundance on each side of this idea about order and recognition. So the first thing could be saying to like one of the shifts or maybe one of the ways that we have made progress is that maybe we have moved from this idea about maybe taking a look at things that are lacking and maybe we have turned it around and seeing how much that we have, how much uh, wealth that we have, quote unquote wealth, how much abundance that we have, that kind of thing. So I'm seeing that. So somebody is being applauded for their efforts if that resonates with you in terms of a mindset or a consciousness shift, that's being applauded. The other thing about PIG is that it can represent um, recognition as well. So we have this thing here with order, talking about honor and recognition, and then we have a similar message with pig about honor and recognition as well. So it could just be, again, taking time to consider how you have made progress, what area have you made progress in, and being willing to either honor yourself or that you're going to, again, receive honor from those around you. So again, because we have that idea of being repeated twice. Now, taking a look at the three of spades, again, now just like the seven of spades in the line this week, we have the three of spades. Spades is a suit that represents problems, challenges, difficulties, right? So again, there may be some element of that we need to consider as I'm contemplating the message of the three of spades. The three of spades represents maybe what we need to cut out this could represent a growing and developing problem. And with that, what do we need to eliminate? What needs to be released? What needs to be let go? What do we need to cut out in relation to that problem, right? So there is that. It's making me feel like if we go with the idea that on the one hand, we're talking about the deepening of relationship, we're talking about becoming emotionally safe or emotionally comfortable, you know, this idea about being safe and comfortable showing up as who I am, then this card on the other side could represent what relationships do we need to let go of? What relationships do we need to release? What relationships do we need to eliminate? Because they do not allow us to show up as who we are. The three of spades in that regard, this is known as the artist card. So for me, that's about creative approach or creative self-expression. I call this card about, or the number three within this card about finding your voice. So it could just be a matter of being in relationships in which you do not get to honor who you are, meaning I don't get to show up as me, right? So we have on one side, this idea about honoring the relationships that allow you to do that. And then maybe taking another look, because this is also about examination, taking another look at those relationships that do not allow you to do that. And would you be willing to say that I'm going to honor myself and I'm going to recognize that who I am is important. And it doesn't need to be quelched or diminished or anything like that, right? So it could also be too for some relationships that we may need to consider reevaluating that the pig could represent too much because I tend to look at the pig as excess. 
right? And so with that, I'm hearing a Kylie Minogue, Minogue song in my head, and you may want to YouTube it. Um, it's called Too Much, but I'm hearing the words too much. So there could be a matter of some relationships that are just too much, right? With that. And so we need to kind of maybe give those a rethink. So those are the thoughts that I would offer in terms of the dynamic. So again, Fish and pigs share this idea about wealth and abundance, so there may be a shift in one's mindset, especially if you've been, I thought I was done, <laughs> especially if you've been worried about abundance, about tapping into creating wealth in your life, wealth in whatever you know uh, means or ways that would be beneficial to you at this point in time. But again, that would be being creative. But if there's been some worry or indecision about that, because the three of spades can sometimes be about worry or indecision, then... This card is asking you to shift that. What can you do to let those thoughts go? Um, it reminds me of Abraham would say, Abraham, the collective consciousness that um, channels through Esther Hicks, right? Um, this idea about finding a better feeling thought because that those thoughts aren't serving and supporting you, right? That kind of thing. So it's about that. So they share that in terms of wealth and abundance, but I think in terms of like maybe... Uh, a dichotomy is that on one hand we have this idea about you know looking at or honoring those relationships that allow us a greater sense of intimacy and connection that allow us to feel safe and comfortable with being who we are and showing up as that as opposed to those relationships that maybe kind of um, uh, keep us from doing that for whatever the reason is or whatever the dynamic is right so there is that to consider. And so that's how I would look at the difference in terms of honor and recognition going with order as the middle card. So now the last thing that we can do with the playing cards is that we could add the pips all the way across. And if you notice, I have my calculator here because I'm not going to trust myself to do it in my head. So here we have 10, 3, 11, because jacks are 11, 7, and 7. So the total is 38. Okay, so then we have the 11th card, right? Because 38, oh no, I'm sorry. I, I went one step too far. So 38, there's actually 52 cards in the deck, so I don't need to reduce it. So we look for the 38th card. But I will come back to that idea about number 11. Oh, here we go. Okay. Ah. Oh. Oh my gosh, I love this. Okay. <laughs> so, the 38th card in the deck is the Seven of Diamonds and Flames on the Hearth. Okay, the reason why I love this card is because of the playing card insert, the Seven of Diamonds. So when the Seven of Diamonds comes up, in terms of the focus card being about order and recognition, right, what do we need to recognize? What needs to be honored? Here we have another seven card. So we have that seven repeating, right? So seven is number of spirituality, but it's also the number about self-awareness, right? So seven of diamonds comes up when this is about investment. And usually it usually talks about financial investment, but in a general context, I talk about this investment of your time, your energy and resources into any situation, right? And with that, anytime we invest in the situation, we get some kind of return. When this card comes up, it's being asked to take a look at the return on the investment of your time, energy, and resources into a situation. So since we talked about relationships, that may be where we're putting our um, energy into in terms of taking a look at the return. So basically, when this card comes up, it represents in terms of an investment and getting a return on that investment, it asks the question, was it worth it? This card can suggest if it's not worth it, then what we're doing is we're being asked to, uh, you know, evaluate things or re-evaluate things, assess a situation or reassess a situation and saying, if I didn't get the return that I was looking for, what might I need to do differently in terms of energy investment to produce or yield the result that I do want, right? It could be suggesting that, you know, if it hasn't been working, if you haven't gotten the return on the investment that you've been wanting, something about the way you're approaching it needs to change. That shift, remember? Sometimes the biggest shift happens when we change the way we think about something, right? So it could just be a matter of a shift in our thinking, and that will produce or that will start the process of producing the result that we want. Everything starts with a decision to look at something differently, but we have to be willing to make that decision. Everything starts with that. 
Right. And so sometimes this card can also be about waiting for results. So it could just be a matter of like, if you've invested in something and you're waiting on the, and you're waiting on the return of your investment, I was going to say, and you're looking for the return in your investment, it may be a matter of waiting for the results. Right. And so that would be a matter of two with the oh, back, wrong card. Going back to the three of spades about this test or this examination, and then we're waiting for the results of that, right? So there's that. Now, the flames as the symbol on the card, if we're sticking with the context that the cards are talking about relationships, whether ones we want to continue to honor and deepen, or ones that we need to honor and release them, that's another way of honoring them, honoring yourself and the other person and saying, okay, we've gotten to this point. This is maybe as far as we're going to go in this situation. And I honor you and I release you, right? Kind of thing. So if we need to do that either way, Flames is all about passion. It's all about warmth. It's all about desire um, in the positive sense. It's like those, you know, it makes me feel like the setting is like, you know, the, the idea of like relationships that make you feel warm and cozy, right? And then on the flip side, those that make you hot red hot <laughs> you know that kind of thing so this could be about burning a burning desire it could be in the positive sense and maybe in the not so positive sense but i think more often than not then it goes back to this card it's a matter of investment getting a return on the investment assessment reassessment evaluation reevaluation, that kind of thing and it could just be a matter of some things we may need to burn away and that's a form of purification. So maybe those relationships that aren't working, that aren't so great, maybe you decide you want to stick it out. And the idea here is like there's some aspect of the relationship that needs to be purified. You know, there's something that we need to we need to be um, needs to be burned away, metaphorically speaking, right? So, but there are some that you know make you feel warm and cozy, and then some that you know are a little challenging, make you hot. Either way, remember. The seven is a number of uh, self-awareness. So either way, either context, you're learning. Right? It's teaching you something about you. It's also teaching you something about what you need and value in the context of relationships. But diamonds represent value, right? So that is how I would look at the overall card. So now I talked about the 11 because I don't want to um, overlook that. So the 11 as a numerical theme could just be a matter of taking a larger look at the situations that we experienced this week because the... The 11 is a master number, and for me it represents spirituality, but it also represents vision. So it represents what do you envision for your life, for your relationships, whatever the context or the aspect, what's your vision for those things this week? It's about you taking a look at that. It also can be a number that represents truth. So for some people, it could just be a matter of getting to the truth of the situation or situations this week. What's true for you in the context of relationships and also honoring what's true for the other person. Because your truth is not going to be the only truth there is, right? Your truth is going to be what's, what's true for you at this point in time, right? And you have to, if you're, going to, if you're going to ask for your truth to be honored, you have to be willing to honor the truth in another person. Even if it's contrary to your own truth, right? So there is that. So again, the 11 is about spirituality. It's about vision. It's about truth. Right? So there is that to consider as well. And I love the fact that, too, the 11 is also about spiritual teachings and being a spiritual teacher. And we had a majority of cards from the suit of clubs this week show up, again, reminding us about that whole teaching learning aspect, right? Always remember that life is always going to be your biggest and most profound teacher. So what's life teaching you? And what is life, what is life going to be teaching you this week? So that is how we would look at the hidden dynamics in the cards. The very last thing that we can do is we can look at what the essence, remember I talked about this essence card as being if the universe was to drop one card down and say, this is your, uh, the essence of your reading in a nutshell, this would be the card. So what we do is we take the numbers of the cards, not the playing card insert numbers, but the numbers of the cards themselves. So going from left to right, the tower is 35, the tree is 5, order is 45, lilies is 20, and clouds is 25. So the total is 130. So what happens is there are 52 cards in the deck. The number is clearly over 52. So then we add the three digits together, and we have 4.
because 1 plus 3 is 4, and then 4 plus 0 is 4. So the fourth card in the deck is, and I'm going to go through it, and so this would be the essence. And here we have it right. Oh, oh, I love this. There's no mistake. You can't make this stuff up. Okay. <laughs> so here we have the four of clubs and the key card. Okay. So four of clubs is a card that talks about foundation. It's a number that represents, or a card, I should say, that represents foundations being laid, something that we can build on for the future, right? So there is that. Now, this is also a card that represents the teacher. So we have another clubs card. Remember, clubs is the suit that represents teaching and learning. And then we have a card here that represents a natural teacher, right? So there is that. Now, another thing with this card is that it's a message card. So it's about, again, paying attention to the messages that life brings your way this week. Remember the idea that life is always speaking, right? So it's a matter of, are you paying attention, right? So there is that with the four of clubs. I'm seeing that. Now, key is the most important thing uh, here because key is a card that represents answers or solutions, discoveries, and revelations. That is how I look at key. Key is also representative of something that's important, something that is certain, but here's the thing. Because I just talked about the 11, about being a number of truth, about what is true for you, as well as honoring what is true for other people. Key is also an, a, a symbol that represents truth. So, overall picture, this could be about moving through experiences this week where we gain a greater sense of understanding because we discover or have revealed to us answers and solutions that are going to be helpful moving us forward about helping us make some progress this week, right? There's that with key. It could also be about, again, tapping into or discovering or having a revelation of what's true for you at this point in time. As you embark on the next leg, stage, phase, chapter of your life, you may tap into a greater sense of knowing what your personal truth is as you honor and recognize that what is true for you may not be true for everyone. And you acknowledge the truth for other people as well. And so on that note, I will go ahead and end and round out this week's Oracle Outlook. I want to thank you for hanging in there with me and joining me throughout this entire video reading. And I look forward to sharing the same space with you in our next video reading together. So until then, I'm hoping that you have a wonderful day, and I'm hoping that you have a very insightful week. Take care.